Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here once more. And I want to thank all of you for welcoming us to be part of your family and, and to serve the Lord and hear his word together. Uh, some new faces. So I'm, I'm Marvin Allstrand. This is my wife, Susan. We live here in Stevensville, and uh, we attend local community church. But the Lord has opened the door to do pulpit supply, and I love doing it. And I've been doing it for 10, 11 years. And, and every, every time I do it, it's, it's a blessing. So before we start today, I'd like to just ask the Lord to be with the message here. So Heavenly Father, we come to you as, as believers and children of God. And Lord, let your, the message today and the scripture that was read to be live and powerful and meaning to our hearts. And let the message be, Lord, truthful and said with authority and power today, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture reading is uh, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. So Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. While you're turning to it, the, the title of the message is, is Surrender. And that's a big word. It has two R's, a number of R's in it, but it covers a lot of aspects of our life. So as you go through there, just think about surrender. That's kind of what the message is going to be about, what God's going to tell us to do here today. So, Romans 12, 1-2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, God is telling us to, what? To transform, to be changed. And what this world needs, what we all need, young and old, is to be renewed. And the spiritual renewal is what he's talking about. And he's calling us to surrender to his son, Jesus Christ. I want to read another passage that Jesus says what it takes to surrender. This is Matthew 16, 24 to 25. Matthew 16, 24 to 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. But whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So the question you have to ask yourself, should I surrender? Well, duh. Yes, right? I mean, that's what we all say. We should say yes, yes. But what does Christ say? He just says, first of all, you have to desire to surrender. Desire to follow him, you have to desire to surrender. And then, what do you do? You have to deny yourself. You to take up his cross. What does take up his cross mean? That means to understand and follow the gospel and share the gospel. That's what our message is. We have to share, and we've talked about the last time I was here, but we share the gospel. <clears throat> Fourth, we have to follow him. We have to deny ourselves and follow him. And if you want change in your life, you want forgiveness and peace that you've never known, God requires total surrender. He becomes Lord of your life. That's what happens. You know, we really surrender all the time anyway. If you've ever been on an airplane, are you surrendered to the pilot in that plane? I mean, you're strapped in your seat and there's not much you can do but hope you land. Yeah. You know? Safely. Yeah, safely. And Susan and I went to Connecticut to see our son one flight, and it was so bumpy, they didn't even serve drinks. And I don't want to do that again. But we were surrendered. We were like just white knuckling it all the way over there. Well, if you ever had been to a doctor and had an operation, you know, they say count to three and you get to two and you're out. I mean, aren't you surrendered to the nurses and the wisdom of the doctors totally? You know, the dictionary describes surrender as to yield or to give up to a higher authority. 
Well, I would like to paint a mental picture of surrender for you today. You're never going to forget. Here in the Bitterroot Valley, we have some wonderful mountains on that side called the Bitterroots and on this side called the South Fire Mountains. And on a clear day, blue skies or on a sunset, you can see the silhouette of these mountains against the sky, right? We've all seen that. We all love it when we see those night sights. But the mental picture I want to leave with you is if you could graft, put on paper a Christian life or our lives, we would have peaks and valleys just like those. And whenever you drive down this valley, you're going to see those. You're going to be thinking, well, where am I at this <laughs> serenity? Am I at the peak or am I on the down sill dial side into, the, into that low valley that we all have get, gotten into? You know, the highest peaks we represent those times when we've really allowed the Lord to take and we've given up those things that we kind of hold on to sometimes in our lives. And the valleys are where we've kind of taken it back. So anytime you see those, you're going to be thinking of this message. Where am I? There's a higher peak over here. And that's why I want to think that mental picture of surrender to the Lord. You know, at the moment we accepted Christ, we were totally surrendered. It was different for all of us, but some of us were on our knees in a moment of despair. And we had nowhere else to go but to Christ. We surrendered it all. We surrendered it all when we accepted Christ because He became the Lord of our life. You know, some translations of the Bible, they don't use the word surrender. They use the word as like yielding to the Lord in, in Romans 6 or submitting, as in James 4 7 it says, submit yourselves there to the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee. So when we say yielding or submitting, we're actually surrendering to the Lord. So what are we actually surrendering? You know, surrender in a, is a battle term as well. It implies giving up all the rights to the conqueror. You've seen those movies on TV where they're waving the flag, they come out their hands up, right? Do they surrender with baggage? Or do they surrender with the clothes that they have on? They leave everything else behind. That's what you surrender with. Nothing. They lay down their arms and they give up to the conqueror. So when you totally and really truly surrender the Lord, you take nothing with you. You keep nothing. You surrender all of it. And surrender the Lord works the same way as when you surrender in a battle. We have to remember that God has a plan for our life. And surrendering means that we set aside our plans, our wants, and our desires for His. And we eagerly, we eagerly seek His will. Right. But the good news is that God does have a plan for us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, towards all of us. It says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Unlike our plans that we sometimes follow, Proverbs 14, 12, there's an answer to those too. It says, there's the way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. You know, we Christians seem to have different levels of surrender, don't we? You know, we have our ups and downs in our lives. But the more areas that we learn to surrender of those things that we want to hold on to, the more our old self-worshipping nature is replaced by the nature of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17, it tells us there that, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. And I was trying to find a verse that sums up a Christian living, a Christian life that's surrendered to the Lord. And, it, and I found it in, in Galatians 2.20. I don't know if you all know this, but it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. 
But the life I now live in the flesh, which we all are in the flesh here now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, surrender, when we surrender our life, it's pleasing to the Lord and to us. And we, it results in the greatest human fulfillment that man could ever know. And if you're not a Christian, you would never know that. Sounds pretty simple, right? Are we all totally surrendered? You know, this is a hard message for all of us. You have to ask yourself and be truthful. If you're not totally surrendered, what are you afraid of? What is it that you're holding on to that is keeping you from surrendering 100% of your life? This verse right here, one of my favorite verses, Psalm 46. It says, be still and know that I am God. That God is God. Okay. And that's who we surrender to. Just be still and know that when you surrender, all those things that you have that you're holding on to, you're surrendering to God. And there's a calming sense that says, just be still and know. You have to surrender your mind. What's your mind? Well, it's your thought process. It's your human consciousness. It's it's your memory. It's what makes you, you. Do you realize that everyone who's ever breathed air, or ever will breathe air on this planet, is different? We all are unique. There's never another one of us. And God knit us together in the womb that way. And the mind is probably the hardest thing to surrender because it's your thought mind. So how do we do this? Well. Again, we kind of go back to the instruction book. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, For he, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What we think about, dwell on, constantly bring up, we become eventually. What we get eventually, what we want. What we keep in our minds, we get, whether good or bad. And in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just and pure and lovely and of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. You ever had thoughts since last week about your spouse, your boss, your neighbor, your friend? Did you apply all these thoughts to that person? I'm going to say no. We all probably do. But there's a promise that comes with that. The promise is in Isaiah 26.3. It says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because what? Because when you think about the Lord, you've trusted in him. You're trusting in him. The hardest thing for us to give up I believe there's all those hurts and those angers that have occurred to us over the years. It's one thing if you wreck a car and you lose a car, you lose some money, you lose this, whatever it is, but when, when you have a, a hurt or anger that's hurt you by someone else, it is really hard to surrender. Now, I grew up on a farm. I had three sisters. We were all 18 to two months, so 18 months to two years apart. We were a close family, but in the early 80s, my oldest sister and my next younger sister, Lois and Eleanor, got into some business together, and over an amount of about $2,500, they became, they hated each other. For 30 years, this hate separated our family, and they would write letters to each other, 10-page type letters, single lines saying, of all the evils the other person has done and how bad they are, and not only would they send it to each other, but they would send it to my aunts and my uncles and my cousins, and it was oh, destroyed wow. my family. My mom and dad were, were just torn up by it. They would write things like, I'm going to destroy you, and I'm going to, you should be cut out of the family with a rusty knife. This is what they said to each other. <laughs> and for years, I resented my sisters, because every time we'd have a family thing, he says, well, if she's going to be there, I'm not going to be there. And there was always this, this animosity, and 
My mother went to the grave with us in our family. I remember at our memorial, I had all my sisters together. I said, can't we just be a family? Can we just forget this and just leave it behind, let dad have peace in his final years? And that lasted about a month. And then it started all over again. And then dad would call me. They both, mom and dad would both call me and say, Marvin, you're the brother. You have to be the peacemaker. And I tried. I would call him up. I'd, but if you ever mentioned the other one's name, you'd have to hold the phone away. And I'd let Susan listen. And you'd hear on the phone all this foul mouth. You know what she did to me? Are you taking her side? Blah, blah, blah. And it tore up her family. And a lot of, in this room, probably this has happened. If not, it probably will in some form or another. And I had a hard time just, just forgiving them, wanting to. Then my dad passed away, and then my older sister was executive will, and, and I found out after three years of trying to figure out that she'd spent all of his money in, in pilfered inheritance, just pilfered away. So I was angry. I said, they did this to my family. And I tried to forget. I said, well, I won't think about it anymore. In my part, I think I just won't think about it. I just struggled with getting over this hurt. And I'll tell you the answer in a little bit, the, the, the verse that helped me. But the other thing you have to surrender, you have to surrender your body, our physical body, what we live in, this earthly flesh that God has given us, special to live in while we're here. But you know, this body in 1 Corinthians 3, it says that, do you not know that you are the temple of God? We are walking temples of God because His Holy Spirit indwells us. And we can fill that temple with little things that he won't associate with, right? We can quench the spirit, hurt the spirit. In Matthew 26, 41, when Jesus was facing arrest, he's with his disciples. He says, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. What that means is the spirit who dwells you is willing to keep you out of temptation and give you a way out, but the flesh is so weak. You have to surrender your heart. What's your heart? Your heart is your desires. It's where you keep your treasures. The things that are close to us are values. But yet, in Jeremiah 17, it says that the heart is deceitful <coughs> above all. Who can know it? Who can really know your heart or a man's heart? But there's a favorite verse my mom always used to tell me. It's Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. What does that mean? Put in your heart His kingdom and His righteousness. Then all these other things that we worry about and all these other things that we think about will be added unto you. But first, fill your heart with his kingdom. Keep God's kingdom in your heart. Next one is the hardest one. You have to surrender your will. What you will. It's our sin nature, right? Our selfish desires is our wants. It's all about me. So I'm going to ask you a question. You have to raise your hand on this answer. I want to see if there's any, if we're all truthful. You ever seen a picture of you in a group? Who's the first person you look for when you look at that picture? <laughs> you look for yourself. Raise your hand. <laughs> all right. All right. So I'm seeing you say, okay, we all, our self is important to us, right? That's our will. And I, and I tried to find one good verse for each of these items. And the verse that I, I really found for this one is the one that helped me get through this forgiveness that my, what my sisters had done to our family. And it's back to Matthew 26. The story is, is Jesus leaves his disciples three times and goes away and prays to his father. and says, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup from me but not my will. You. Three times he did this. And he came back and we find his disciples sleeping. That's where he came up with the flesh is willing, or the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus, man. Jesus, God. 
He knew what he was going to face as a man on the cross. It's death. That meant death for him, but life for us. That's what that did. And he gave up his will as God. And it's there at that cross. So we have the power for him to forgive those who do all those things. When I realized that what he had done, I was able to leave him. At the cross. All those hurts. And all those things we struggle with, the physical, the addictions, whatever they are, we will, based on what Jesus did for us. You know, we are complicated beings. We're made up of many parts, aren't we? And it's impossible to surrender just one part and not the others. If we all have that, like for years, I just, I didn't want to let that go because I could like a cow chews his cut, I'd bring it up and think about it a little bit, you know. <laughs> you know, but it, it doesn't taste very good for me anyway. <laughs> but the most uncomfortable thing for Christian life is to be out of sync with the Lord. Yeah. You know. Total surrender begins at the moment we become a child of God. And it continues until Christ comes to get us or we die in our faith. The process is a growth in grace for us. And studying God's word on a daily basis, or even a moment by moment basis. About a year and a half ago, Susan faced some serious medical things. We went to the emergency room in Hamilton. They said, well, you gotta get cut to the community right away. You need an operation. They had a found a blood clot on her portal vein in her liver. We had it up there, we were up there for six or eight hours. It was moment by moment. We had to surrender. We were like in that operating room. We didn't know. But the Lord is there with us. He knew what was going on. We didn't. We need to listen to the scriptures. Stay in the scriptures. Listen to the Holy Spirit. You do know that in the Bible, the word listen, this is my son, listen to him, listen now. He who has ears, let him hear, is mentioned 400 times in the Bible. But the word listened, I listened to the Lord, I, you know, listened, when we listen to someone, there's only 50 times. You see a balance of scales here? You know? So each time you look at those bitter root mounds, and each time you look at the sapphires, you're going to think about this message, aren't you? Where are you at when you're surrendering to the Lord? Where are you at with your walk with the Lord today? Is it a peak or is it a valley? Remember the valleys, there's always a peak coming. Just get climbing on it. And if it's a peak, try and stay there. <laughs> if you can. But you can with your surrendering and the help of the Lord and His power. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, again for the message of your word that's so simple and so clear and so powerful. Let it apply to our lives and just remember what Christ did on the cross gives us power to have surrender everything that we want to hold on to. In Jesus' name, amen.